This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the employment of S5 and guided rockets in the MiG-21 for DCS World. The 57mm S5 rocket can be housed in a pod containing 16 or 32 rockets. Contacting the ground crew for rearming, we're able to see that the pod containing 32 rockets can only be carried on the inboard pylons, while the pod containing 16 can be carried on either inboard or outboard. So in today's example, I'm carrying the maximum of 96 total quantity S5 rockets with the larger pods on the inboard and the smaller 16 quantity pods on my outboards. When conducting ground attack in the MiG-21, the master mode switch has to be set from air to air to air to ground in the downwards position. Next, setting the weapon selection dial into the desired function. We could see on the 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock position, on the inner row we have 4, 8, and 16 as values. These indicate how many launches will be conducted for whichever pylons are loaded down with S5 rockets. So with 4 rocket pods loaded and the selector set into 8, we can see that 32 rockets will fire as 4 times 8 equals 32. Next we'll set the target size on the ASP gun sight, which is the dial to the right of the three vertical switches. The scale on the left is for aircraft, while the illuminated scale to the right of it is for ground targets and these values are in meters. The three vertical switches to the left of target size control the various modes of the ASP. The upper switch will select between either guns or launch with all weapons aside from guns using the lower position. Next, the middle switch will select between either fire or bombardment with all weapons using the upper position aside from bombs which uses the lower position. The third switch is automatic or manual. Generally we will use automatic although I will include an example of how to conduct an attack using manual. Although, to make it brief, we select the range using the TDC on the throttle grip, which we can see moving just under the HUD. We'll set the attack angle for the desired weapon. We can see we have settings for various weapons on the right dial. The third step, which differs from automatic when using manual, is that we would set the radar into fixed beam mode so that we could use it to lock on to ground targets to feed information for ranging. At this point, we'll be repeating what we just covered, although we'll be doing it in the attack room. So we can see we got the master mode into air to ground. At this point, I'll select how many launches I want to conduct per pylon. I'll conduct four launches per pylon, which will give me a total of 16 rockets fired. The ASP is set up, launch, fire, and automatic. And at this point, we set our target size in meters using the inner scale. And then we will set the gyro to be caged as it's good to have it uncaged for guns, although when you're using any weapon other than guns, you want that thing caged, as it'll make your attack run quite difficult otherwise. Now at this point, I can see my target there, just off to my 11 o'clock, so I'll roll in on it. Be careful not to over-G, or not to pull negative Gs. As over-G is bad, it can shear weapons off your pylons, negative G can kill the engine, requiring an in-air restart. At this point, I'll place the pipper below the target, and just walk it up onto the target until I start seeing range information fed onto the scales just below the HUD, at which point I will know that I'm within ranged fire. The red light just above the gun selector indicates launch authorized, while the red light to the right of the range scales indicates brake attack. As due to the altitude that the brake attack light comes on, ground fire is a real threat. As we look back, we're able to see all targets were destroyed in the attack. Next, in another example of automatic, I'll set the selector for 16 launches which will launch 8 rockets out of the outboard pylons, because they only have 8 left, but it'll launch 16 out of the inboard pylons. So this will give me a total of 48 rockets to strafe along this convoy. So at this point, I will set the pipper for the lowest target, hold weapons release, and walk it over to the last target, which should cover the entire length of the column. And looking back, we're able to see that I got at least half of the group. We'll see this again in a manual example this time. So everything plays out pretty much the same, except this time I'll set the selector into manual and set the attack angle for the S5 rocket. Now at this point, I'll roll in on the target, but I'll be sure to engage the radar this time in fixed beam mode, and as I place the pipper over the target I want to attack, I'll press target lock. Using the TDC on the throttle grip, I can set the range for the attack, which I'll leave at the max I can of 2,000 meters, and we can see that there's a scale just to the left of the range scale, this will indicate the range to the locked target, and we can use this as a crude judge of range for the attack.
With all rockets fired along the length of the column, I'll look back after the attack and we're able to see that I've destroyed most of the group, if not all of the group, this time around. And with the attack complete, I can set the radar back into normal function, or set it back into standby. In one final clip, we'll get to see this from an external point of view. In closing, the S-5 is a fairly accurate rocket, and you carry a fair quantity of them, though their use is fairly limited to soft targets, as they're fairly inefficient at destroying heavily armored targets like main battle tanks.